Gamers Civilization number two. Everything you need to know about. Dude, I'm gonna butcher this Civ's name the whole video. John Dark. We're gonna cover this one next. And then the third Civ I'm covering today is gonna be Ayubids, which we're gonna save for a little bit later. So let's get into it. Uh, Jean d'Arc navigates the journey of a hero, royal knights available in age 2, economic technologies are 30% cheaper, like French, trade posts are revealed on the map, like French, traders can return wood, food and gold to markets, like French, trade ships return plus 20% resources, I think like French, and blacksmith grant melee technologies are free after each age up. So we're gonna just jump into it. Now, you might be like, oh, so this is all just same like French? Well, the biggest part about Jean d'Arc is the hero. Uh, if you wanna look at this, like, like at this Civ, uh, a lot of the units, a lot of the styles might be the same or slash similar to French, but the biggest part is the hero, okay? That is just just massive, massive, massive part of it. And people that would wanna play Jean d'Arc are people who are kind of very good at controlling like con and like unit that you have one of because you do not want to lose the hero it's very important you can't buy her back okay there's a button right here and it costs more the higher level she is so you can't buy her back but there are problems with it which i'm going to talk about later it also she also respawns on her own so i hosted one of the new maps i think it's called african waters um and I just kind of wanted to go through the civilization. Everything you need to know about this variant civ of the French civilization. So number one, you can see her uh, selected right here with the little crown. I'm going to make some barracks. I'm going to make some docks as well. And this is also one of the new biomes, by the way. Savannah, I think is the biome name. Um, kind of looks... I mean, yeah, there you go. Looks cool, actually. I like it. Now, how does she get experience? In the bottom left, you have experience and you have a level up. So once you level up, you can click this and then you pick one or the other, which we're going to talk about in a little bit. So she has four levels and in level one, she is a villager and she has a couple of buffs. Journey of a hero, she gains experience, yada, yada, yada. She gains a little bit of experience over time. So you can see I'm already kind of even though I haven't done anything with her, she is getting some XP. Uh, then she has, uh, she regenerates 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5 health per second while out of combat based on her current level. So 1 HP per second in, in uh, level 1. At level 3, uh, Jean takes 50% less damage from range attacks. At level 4, this is increased to 66%, so ranged attacks. And then Talented Builder. She constructs buildings 33% faster. Upon reaching level 2, uh, she shares her talents with nearby builders. Okay, so let's get into it. So you can get experience with her two ways uh, when she's a villager. You can select or gather resources. And when you're gathering resources, she will be getting XP over time, which you'll see right now. I don't think the chopping tree down counts. Uh, I think it's only once you start gathering from it. So you'll see in a second experience pop up. There you go. Plus 2 XP. Plus 2 XP. And in order to level up, you need... How do I see that actually? Oh, here. You need 500 experience total. Now, where to put the hero? I'll just I'll just refer to it as the hero. It's easier so I don't have to butcher the name every time. So you don't want to put her on wood because chopping the tree down does not gain experience. You can put her on gold. But the best place to put it on the start is sheep. Why? Because there's almost no travel distance. You're going to be raking that XP in. You don't want your hero to go from here and then travel because you don't want to get experience traveling. Okay, you just get experience gathering. But the best way to get experience with her early game is to build buildings. Now, if you're pro uh, constructing a building with her, she gains four experience, not two. She gains four experience. So whenever you start with Jean d'Arc Civ, you want to immediately put villagers on food and you want to build a house with her. Now, I'm not going to say that you should go build a house and then build a you know mining camp, then build a lumber camp. It's not worth to send her around, but you usually want to build a house with her and build you know a landmark with her 
or barracks if you're making a barracks for some reason in Dark Age. That's what you want to do. But in general, uh, you want to keep her, you know, on, on the sheep. So I'm just going to build some buildings with her here so that we can uh, lever her up as fast as possible. Mind you, she also constructs 33% faster. So you can do some stuff like uh, you can age up by only putting her on the landmark if you want like the slow age up or if you want faster age up if you put three villagers plus her you actually age up faster than the other sales because she constructs a little bit quicker so i'm gonna get some upgrades here just in case and uh let's talk about age ups so age up number one is school of cavalry and chamber of commerce now all Jean d'arc's landmarks are the same as french ones i'm just gonna say it from the get-go they are all identical so nothing is different nothing changes but like I mentioned earlier, you do want to build a landmark with her. So I'm sure there's going to be some builds where you actually just age up with her. So you get the most experience possible because you can see how much XP you're getting. So there's going to be some interesting builds and interesting mechanics with that. Where, yeah, you get your age up slower if you only age up with her. But the fact that the other villagers are not assisting makes it so that she gains more experience. So I'm I'm sure there's going to be stuff like that that people are going to be using and and abusing. So that's something to uh, to take in consideration of. Now another thing that I was told but I haven't actually tested it is that you can keep her villager once she's ready to level up. You can keep her as a villager and she will actually continue gathering experience. So when you transform her into level two she will already transfer that experience onto, you know, level two to level three kind of progress. So we're going to test that right now. But as you can see, look how much experience I'm getting just from her building this landmark, which would also, like I said, mean that uh, you will get, um, I should have enabled cheats for this one. Actually, I'm going to show you a little bit later. If I remember the cheats, uh, there's a cheat to, to level her up, level her up basically. So as I'm building that, let's talk about the units. Well, Barracks, there's nothing unique about John Dark's barracks. Uh, she has spearmen, she has men at arms, same stuff as any other normal sieve, nothing weird. On the water, we do have long guns, just like French unique upgrade. Every other ship is the same. We got galley ass, we got war cogs, just like the French, so nothing unique there. Now, her upgrades are cheaper, economic upgrades, they are cheaper, but one thing I almost forgot her economic buildings are not so her mill is not also cheaper like french her lumber camp is not cheaper her mining camp is not cheaper they cost as much as any other sips okay so that's one thing you guys gotta remember as you can see now she is on 500 xp now again someone told me that you continue keeping the the xp over but i'm just gonna put her to make another landmark and uh, I'm just gonna start building the next landmark immediately so she can get uh, XP farming. So in School of Cavalry, uh, like I said, just like French, we got knights, um, you know, we have all the same upgrades, nothing has changed there. Once we build a blacksmith, you do get plus one uh, damage on your melee units, just like you would with French. And then what else do we got? We got archer ranges that I'm gonna build as well. Uh, now there is a unique upgrade in blacksmith that French does not have and that is something I'll explain in a little bit and you'll know the reason why. Um, archer ranges, same thing, they got crossbows, they got the uh, with the upgrades, nothing weird there. Market, same thing, you, get, uh, you can choose which resource you want to uh, take back except the stone of course. And then uh, another very important thing that I almost forgot to mention is uh, Jean d'Arc Civ does not have faster villager production. So the villagers produce in 20 seconds. They do not have faster villager production. I'm in castle now and you can see that the villager production is 20 seconds. So that is very, very, very important to know. Let's age up as well. Um, might as well, right? Let's go with that. And the hero is right here. Now, there is a unique upgrade here in Royal Institute or in University. There is a unique upgrade, which is increases the damage of and health of John's companions by 20%. So that is unique to her because she has obviously that ability. Now, let me show you. I'm going to level her up so you guys can see what that looks like. 
All right, here we go. I'm gonna basically once you fill up this bar, you're gonna choose, and you can see here the four levels. You're gonna choose path of the warrior or path of the archer. So what is the difference between these two? I'm gonna actually select path of the archer now. Or whatever, I'll do Archer, doesn't matter. Path of the Warrior, you can try yourself very soon. Uh, you gain the Holy Wrath ability, which deals area of effect damage around uh, Jane. So, the important thing here is, you cannot change back after. So once I select Path of the Warrior or Path of the Archer, she will be either a melee unit or a ranged unit for the rest of the game. Now there's some other options here and here, but they will not be affecting if she's a melee unit or a ranged unit. This ability, Holy Wrath, basically, it kind of works like Whirlwind, if you know from other games, where she's gonna, she does like a spin attack and she deals AoE damage to the units around her. Now, this is not enough in level 2 to like one-shot villagers or something like that. Uh, I can't remember what the exact damage is, but I think it's like 20 or 30 damage. And this ability has a cooldown and you gain it, uh, gain stacks of it over time. I'm gonna go with Path of the Archer. Um... If you chose Path of the Warrior, she's kind of like a man-at-arm. If you choose the ranged variant, she is an archer. So this, she has 200 health, she has 6 attack, plus 8 versus light melee infantry. And one thing that you'll see very interesting is that she does have um, plus 14 damage versus huntable animals. So the way you level her in uh, a level 2 to level 3 is actually by killing wolves, boar, and killing enemy units, okay? And obviously she gets a little trickle of passive, and as you can see, the XP does not carry over. So either who told me that was wrong, or maybe they changed it since last time I played this. But right now you can see you're getting passive XP, but you want to go out on the map with her and kill the wild animals. Now you might be like, oh, you can't kill the boar. Well, actually, you can kill the boar with her very easily. This is, she's basically feudal age, and even if you tank, the boar is not gonna do that much damage. Potentially, you could get a scout or something to tank for you a little bit, but you can kill the boar very easily, and you get 50 XP. Now, I'm not sure if this map has wolves. It might not, but the wolf, if I remember, gives you 12 XP. So just so you guys, I'm, I'm not seeing any wolves. So I, I think this map might not have them. Uh, although I'm not sure if you kill deer or sheep you do not get XP which is very very important to know I'm gonna kill another one here let's talk about her abilities so ability number one is divine arrow if you're ranged so this is the the whirlwind is the melee divine arrow is if you're choosing ranged uh, Jean d'Arc uh, she targets an enemy and fires a divine arrow that deals 40 damage Max charges is four. So what does that mean? Oh, she's regening now, as you can see. Like, she's kind of like French Knight. Um, so the cooldown is eight seconds. Recharge time. So you, you, once I shoot, the next time I can shoot is eight seconds if I have the charge. And the max amount of charges, you can see two out of four. So basically in four minutes, you'll get four charges and then you can shoot them every eight seconds. Now, that ability is only impacted by whether you choose the melee or range on dark. You can see right here this blue little uh, thing that's filling up. That is when when is the next time you're going to get a charge. You can see it's filling up slowly. Once it fills up, the charge will be 3 out of 4. Same thing with an E ability. What is the W ability? The W ability is Divine Restoration. Uh, Jean and her ally, nearby allies are blessed, instantly healing for 30% of the missing health. So this is very important to know. Not of total health. So if you're 70% health or 80% health, it's not going to heal you to full, okay? It heals 30% from your missing health. So it's going to heal 30% of the 170 health, okay? So if I click, I got 50 HP. And this is an AoE spell. Uh, the AoE is like somewhere like this, and it's going to heal all uh, your units 30% of missing HP, which is, it's not an amazing ability, but you know, it's a heal, it's better than nothing, right? And then this ability is very, very strong. So listen what it does. Uh, she consecrates a production building, reducing the food cost of units by 25%. And this works on town centers. And... This is global and has no range, okay? So if I press E and I press on town center, you will see this little thing right here. 
And now, once I hover over the villagers, the villagers take uh, only 37 food to produce. This is very, very important. And the first thing you want to use this on is always going to be town center because you want to get the villager cost reduced, uh, especially because you don't produce them faster. So you need some kind of eco help and eco boost. Now, I just had another charge. So now I can use this on my barracks. I can use this on docks. I can use this on, uh, um, what's it called? Stables, landmarks, and I can use this on archer ranges. And the best part is I can also use it on this, which is college of artillery. And you might wonder, well, why would you want to use it there? It reduces only the food cost. Well, let me show you. So I used it on School of Cavalry, and now the knight, it, instead of costing 140 and 100, the knight, let me send her to kill stuff, the knight now costs 105 food, so 35 food cheaper, and 100 gold. Now this is the interesting part. This upgrade that I was talking about, consecrated buildings also reduce the food, the wood and gold cost of units by 25%. Which would mean that once I upgrade this, and I think it's a castle upgrade, once I upgrade it, not only the knights will be reduced by 25% uh, on food, but also the cost of gold and wood of any unit in that production building will be reduced by 25% as well. So this is why I said, if you want, you can use it on College of Artillery, and once you get this upgrade, your siege will also be reduced, which I'm gonna show you guys uh, in a little bit. Important to note, you cannot use Divine Arrow on uh, deer or boar or sheep. So you can only use it on enemy buildings, or sorry, on enemy units. Uh, you can also use it on buildings, by the way. Um, now, 40 damage is not a lot, but villagers have 50 health. So if you're playing Jean d'Arc, you can basically shoot a villager twice and then snipe it with Divine Arrow. This ability is going to be very important to how you use it, because you can snipe crossbows with it, you can snipe archers with it, you can snipe lens connect with it, you can snipe knights that are trying to run away, you can snipe scouts. There's a lot of uses for it. So, our research is just completed for the 25% reduction. And if you look, now our knights cost 105 food and 75 gold. Our horsemen cost 75 and 15. So they don't cost 20 wood anymore, they cost 15 wood. Now, if I were to use this ability on College of Artillery, you can see right here, cost of units reduced by 25%. The siege is now cheaper. The cauldron is 340, 50. A Rebaldic one is 262-375, and then Royal Cannon is 225-450. So this is a very important part of Jean d'Arc civilization because you will save a lot of resources over time. Now, it's very important for you to not lose these buildings. If I were to lose, let's say, uh, you know, a barracks right here, and I had the buff on it, you don't get the buff back. The buff is gone. You can rebuild the building, but the buff is gone. I am actually not sure if I lose the TC, if the cost remains. So if I were to lose my main town center and it has this buff, if it's consecrated, does the consecration stay? I actually am not sure about that, which I just thought of. But it would make sense for the landmarks to stay because they're not fully destroyed, but I'm actually not sure and I actually should have tested that. So my apologies. So we're gonna saw the board. There's gonna be some interesting micro you can do like you can obviously kite the board like this So you don't take as much damage because obviously you don't want to just stand there while the boar is beating your ass But the boar region so there's gonna be some kind of interesting micro here where it's like You get her barely out of range to reset and then you kind of pull her back so she doesn't deal as much damage to you You know, there's gonna be cute tricks like that We got 50 XP. I healed up and now we can upgrade her to level um, to level 3 and remember the next level she takes 50% less damage from ranged attacks and also I forgot to say once you upgrade her to level 2 another thing that you do get is this construct the kingdom which nearby villagers construct buildings 33% faster which is very important if you're building landmarks or keeps so we'll see what the range of this is I'm walking in the villager range right now there it is. So I'm assuming it's like here. 
Okay, so the range is like about this, I would say. This is the range. So if the villagers are within this range, you will construct buildings 33% faster, which if we were to make a keep, let's say, here we go. So if I build a keep, all the villagers are constructing 33% faster now. They got their little buff. So the keep is going to basically almost come up as Chinese keep. So that's very nice. I don't think you're going to use this for like houses or farms or something. But for building landmarks, for building keeps, I think for sure. Especially if you're like aging with a uh, red palace in some like scary spot or, you know, you might make the use out of it. Uh, you can also use uh, Consecrate on the Monastery, by the way, and you can use it on Keeps. And I know what you're wondering now. Why would you Consecrate a Keep? Well, let me tell you. Level 3! So, again, level 2 just chooses if you're melee or ranged. Level 3 chooses which companions you're going to have. So there's two types of companions. Uh, Jean's Champions become available to train at keeps gains two armsmen which rallies three champions to her side two armsmen is an ability that you basically summon three men at arm at your position and um you can also trade the men at arm champions at the keeps okay if you choose rider companions uh then she gets riders, John's riders, and gains riders ready, which rallies three riders to her. We're gonna go with the riders. I'm gonna show you companions after. And now she becomes, she has a horse, and now she is a cavalry unit. Mind you, even if I chose men at arms, she would still be a ranged unit on a horse, because that's what we chose. And now she has received a fourth buff on her, which is companions close to John gain plus one plus one armor and 10% damage, which means that you would want to keep the companions or riders or whatever they're called uh, next to her and use them with her so they can get buff. So right here we have the riders and they cost, oh, sorry, they cost 180 food and 25 gold, but because I consecrated these two keeps on them, it costs 135 and 15. We can also get uh, the upgrade, which I'm going to get right now. Increases the damage and health of John Companions by 20%. And I'm going to just get all the upgrades for them so you guys can see how much HP and what stats uh, they have. Now, one thing to note, this ability, Divine Restoration, does not scale with your level. So it's still 30% of the missing health. It's still 120 second cooldown. This does not scale in any way. It's still the same. Recharge time, 120 seconds. Max charge is 4 but divine arrow that now deals 100 damage so now this arrow can one shot villagers and can one shot a lot of the units that have less hp very important to know you can use divine arrow on springles and mangonels to kill them so just to give you guys your perspective i'm going to make a little mango right here to show you there we go i'm going to pull her closer so they get buffed I'm going to make a mangonel and a springle just so you guys can see how much damage comparatively I'll be doing. And then the new ability that I just got is Riders Ready. And she calls three riders to her side. You just click it. They spawn right here. And these are her units. Now, these guys also scale once she reaches level 4. They're also stronger. So this is not their final form. But just so you guys can know what exactly they... I, Oh, what exactly they do here we go they do 22 sword damage and they do plus seven versus crossbows so these guys actually are meant to counter crossbow in general so if you're going uh knights or men at arms you can use uh, the uh her uh raiders to rider is that raiders oh it's riders okay i thought it's raiders um to deal with crossbow so potentially with john dark you can go for like man at arm crossbow combo and then when enemy makes crossbows you can use her summon ability and you can use uh keeps to produce more of them and kill the crossbows now one important thing to know is when you play her what you can do and what you should do is try to get behind enemy lines uh and try to snipe villagers with with divine arrow try to do as much chaos in the base as possible 
And while you're there as level three or level four, you can just summon units inside of the opponent's base and just kind of continue raiding or riding. Bunker. Now, um, one more thing I wanted to say. Her damage now is 21 plus eight versus light melee infantry uh, and plus 14 versus animals. In castle, if you were, or um, in castle, if you got the biology, she will have 472 health, okay? Now, when you get to Imperial, her level, her HP doesn't scale. She lev she scales with her level. So if you're uh, Imperial, she doesn't get more stats. She gets only more stats when she reaches level 4. Now, this is important. You can get level 3 Jean d'Arc or even level 4 in Feudal, which is insane. Because, let's say, forget about 122 HP. Imagine if you had a unit with 350 HP in feudal age that's cavalry that deals 18 uh, uh 18 damage plus you know upgrades per shot and has these abilities deals 100 damage so it's very 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 strong uh Manglinal has 168 health and she does 100 damage with this so you're gonna take more than half health from a Manglinal with this shot now one of the things that i will advise people when you play against uh jean d'arc is to not try to stay to prolonged feudal because i'm assuming the prolonged feudal will be extremely hard to deal with with for a lot of sieves because not only she regens she's very strong she has a strong ability she can also summon units that are basically castle age units but um it's also hard to say like oh yeah just don't fight in feudal you know forehead now let me remake this and I'm going to remake it with the cheat code so I can level her up so you guys can see the other side of it, which is when she chooses the melee form and the companions. When you play Jean d'Arc, it's extremely, extremely important for you to be active with your hero. Yes, you do get passive experience, but it is very important for you to build buildings with her, build landmarks with her. Then once you age up, it's important to go hunt wolves, it's important to go hunt boars. Uh, at the same time, you want to get her involved into fights, but also you don't want to lose her. So there's a lot of um, stuff like that where it's like, well, you do want to keep her active, but also you don't want to lose her. By the way, I like this biome. The trees look very nice. That's one of the, like I said, the new biome, Savannah. So it's kind of like a balance where you want to get involved into everything, but you don't want to lose her. So Smorgas board. There we go. And now she levels up. And now we're going to choose the other one. Path of the Warrior. So now she is a little man at arm. She's got three melee armor and two ranged armor. So she's not 3 3, but she is pretty tanky. And her ability, Holy Wrath, she unleashes a powerful area effect attack, striking all enemies within 125 tiles for 20 damage. So she deals AoE in kind of like this area. I would say like Lens Connect, basically. Uh, and it's the same cooldown, same recharge, and same amount of charges like the other one. Her healing ability is the same and her consecrate ability is the same. So nothing changes there. We can age her up again and this time we're gonna go with the uh, two arms men, which is uh, the champion's companions. So now she is basically um, a knight so she does have a lance attack you can see on the bottom she deals 20 damage plus 10 versus huntable animals uh she has 450 hp as the melee version so earlier i had what was it 350 without upgrades at level three at level three in the melee version she has 450 health five five armor and she takes 50% reduced damage from range attack. So she's very, very tanky. And obviously you can use her to raid uh, in this form as well, which makes her even tankier. And your ability, Holy Wrath, now does 35 damage in AoE. Important thing to note is once she dies, she will respawn after a certain amount of time. In Dark Age, I think she costs 100 gold. In Feudal, I think she is 200 or 250. And then... Or not, not feudal, sorry, level 2. And then level 3, she costs 500 gold to rebind. So it gets quite expensive if you keep losing her, right? Now, this is the ability I'm going to show you guys. I'm not sure if it works on deer, but it should. Uh, and there's the range you can see right there. But I'm going to try on deer. 
Okay, it does not work on neutrals. So basically that's how it works. You just run through, you click, and it should just kind of... Uh, now, to armsmen, calls three champions to her side. Uh, I'm not going to do that now because what I want to do is I want to uh, actually age up. So I'm going to build this. Then we're going to build this. So as you can see, I'm aging up, but her stats are not changing at all. Now let's go with the Red Palace. And now we can train the champion uh, men-at-arms at the Red Palace, which we're going to do a couple. So these are... Um, they would have 175 health, right? Yeah, 175 health without the upgrade that I just got in the keep. So in Feudal Age, these guys would have 4-4 four, four armor, 13 uh, damage without the 4 damage that I upgraded, and plus 8 versus Spearman, which is very interesting. So if you level up, if you level her up to level 3 in Feudal Age, you would have men at arms with 175 health, 4-4 four, four armor, 13 damage and then plus a damage versus spearman so if you're playing knight plus archer in feudal and you guys are fighting you're fighting back and forth and you level up you get these guys you can summon three of them every 240 seconds that will shred spearman uh so that's something to take in consideration level four which i haven't shown you yet so now when i age up these guys have 210 health when she sorry not age up level up you will have two options. Now, what are these two options? What is the difference? Well, the difference is in the ultimate ability that you will get right here. So there's two abilities. One of them is you gain uh, an ability that increases attack speed of your allied units. I think the numbers are, because I can't take both. So I'm gonna show you the field commander one. You gain the ability to uh, ultimate ability that increases the attack speed of nearby ally units for 50% for like 20 or 30 seconds. So this ability is obviously really, really, really strong. Uh, and I think this is the one people are going to use most of the time. It inspires a tax bit of all your units, okay, uh, nearby. And then your rally ability, which is this ability that rallies three champions, will also rally a cannon, which is the, the French cannon. So you're going to get three Men at arms and a cannon as a siege every time you use this. So this has great value in terms of resources, and it has better uh, ultimate ability in my opinion. But I'm go go gonna go with the other one because it's funnier, and I want you guys to see it. This one calls seven men at arms, so seven right here. No cannon, but gains the strength of heaven ultimate ability, which greatly empowers one unit. So this one's funnier, so I'm gonna show you this one. And as you see, as I level her up to H4, she now has 600 health without any upgrades. And the men at arms, uh, the champions now have 252 HP with only the uh, upgrade from the keep that increases the companion's damage and, uh, damage and health. So now I'm going to get all upgrades so you can see how much uh, HP they will have. By the way, the the cheat in a jiffy is the one that um, allows you to build stuff instantly. So if you ever wondered, there you go. So now we got all the upgrades. So a royal knight, elite royal knight, has 364 health. She has 210 health. And now holy wrath ability deals 50 damage around her. Uh, 810 health does sound insane, and it is insane. She is very hard to kill very very hard to kill but you have to remember that if she dies the opponent has to pay 1000 gold to buy her back so age four hero is very very difficult to kill but once it dies it's very expensive now one important thing to note let me let me summon the call to arm so you guys can see how that looks now we get seven of them and their hp by the way is 302 they do 30 damage plus 9 versus Spearman, uh, and they got 5-5 five, five armor. So these are their final stats. Now, if I was to lose a hero, this is why losing a hero is really, really bad. 
I will still keep the Holy Wrath stacks, right? When I buy Hero back or it, it revives on its own, I'm still gonna have four stacks. But this ability, you see, it's 210 cooldown right now. When I buy it back, it's not gonna, the cooldown doesn't keep going, right? It's not gonna be like uh, 150 if I buy her back 60 seconds later. It still would be on 210, okay? So if you lose Jean d'Arc, you actually do not gain the abilities over time. Same thing with Consecrate. If you lose the hero, you will still have three out of four stacks when she comes back, but you will not be generating new stacks until she is back alive. Now, let me show you her ultimate ability, which again, it's probably worse ability, but it's more fun to use. I think most people are gonna use the other one. Her other ability is Strength of Heaven. What that does is increases the chosen warrior's health by 300, me four melee and ranged armor, and 300% damage. The cooldown on this ability is 30 seconds, but the cooldown starts when the unit dies, so you can have it like perma unit buffed up. So you can see the cooldown is not moving. Once this unit dies, then the cooldown will start of 30 seconds. And you can only buff one unit at a time. And now this Elite Knight from 364 health and 29 damage, or I guess 32, has 770 HP and 96 auto attack damage. Not charge damage. It hits for 96 per hit. And it also has 12, 12 armor, and the charge damage is 138, which is crazy. 60 torch damage. Now this sounds OP as hell, and it sounds good and all that. But when you think about it, it's one unit and sending like... Okay, you can send like five spears to kill this, because this will two-shot spearmen almost. But if you send like 10, 15 spearmen, they will probably take care of that. But... It is a fun ability. No, you cannot use ability on uh, Siege. I am pretty sure, actually. Uh, but it is a fun ability to use and I definitely suggest it. So these two abilities remain um, no matter which hero, you know, paths you take. But these other ones do change. So let's wait for it and then I'll show you. Uh, another thing to note is her damage right now in at level 4, I keep, I keep wanting to say in age 4, at level 4 is hand cannon damage. So she's basically a hand cannoneer on a horse. A lot of people were balding that she's holding a, a hand cannon because it's not historically correct, Kek W. But uh, she does 72 damage right now. Okay, I have all the upgrades for the um, thing. And she does 200 damage versus building. So she does do siege damage versus buildings, by the way. Oh, that's kind of interesting. I just realized this. So if you chose the melee version, she is a hand cannoneer, but only with 125 tile range. If you chose the range version, she is still a hand cannoneer or has a hand cannon attack, but it's a ranged version. So I actually haven't, uh, haven't even thought of that. So here we go. Strength of Heaven, I cannot use it on Siege, you can only use it on Infantry and Cavalry. But, what you can use it on, is you can use it on a Hand Cannoneer as well. Now, it makes the most sense to use it on a Knight, but using it on a Hand Cannoneer is not bad at all. I'm gonna show you right here. This Hand Cannoneer, oh, actually it makes sense to use Hand Cannoneer too. This Hand Cannoneer now does 126 damage. And it has 430 health with 7-7 seven, seven armor. So, there it is. Uh, Jean d'Arc is very fun to play if you like to be active on the map. If you like harassing, being annoying with the hero, but also trying to keep the hero alive. I would definitely suggest you to try out this Civ. It might be the Civ for you. Uh, remember, uh, I haven't mentioned this, but it is very important. The keeps do not have influence. So you know how French has influence where you build around the keep and the cost of the units is reduced? That does not exist because you have a Consecrate, so you don't need that. So you can place your buildings anywhere you want. Look at that. And also, Consecrate ability does not affect upgrades, by the way. One th important thing to know. 
But now this barracks is concentrated and the men at arms cost 75 15, spearmen cost 45 15. So the longer the game goes, there is no limit to how many buildings you can have consecrated, by the way. So potentially, or like in FFAs, you can have 300 buildings consecrated uh, if the game is long enough and all your units' costs will be reduced. So right here, if you're doing a barracks, the hand are 90 90, archers are 25, 22 37, and so on and so forth. That's it. So there's the Jean d'Arc, John d'Arc. Jean Dark, Jean Dark, I have no idea. I'm sure I will learn it in time, but there it is. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed everything you need to know about the Dark, the Ark. And um, I think it's a very fun, fun Civ. As someone who's not too big of a fan of French Civilization, I don't find French Civilization that fun. Uh, I played the, this variation of the French Civilization and I had a lot more fun playing it. It has really cool unique units. The hero abilities are really cool, so try it out and let me know what you think. Reminder, the subathon is ongoing as you're watching this video. Hopefully, most likely, depending when you watch it. If you're watching on YouTube, thank you so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch. I'm probably live right now. And if you're watching on... Uh, oh, wait. You're not watching on Twitch. That's the automatic brain. Uh, since I'm recording this uh, alone locally in my room. Thank you, YouTube gamers, for watching. Remember, today there's going to be another video which is going to be everything you need to know about Ayubids. Take care.